Okay, for the most part, my an my animation combat has done somewhat well, much better than than the uh, the robot fights I did in March. So I'm going to end with two very classic characters, Skeletor. Now uh, I loved this character when I was growing up. Now I'm taking this again from like the '80s comic books. I mean, the '80s are cartoons. No comics, no movies, no no updates. Just what happened in the '80s cartoons. And I'll be honest, growing up in the 80s, every villain was so cool and all the heroes were kind of vanilla. He-Man. Ripped dude. Kind of coiffed hair. Skeletor. Blue-skinned guy. Clad a lot in purple. And his head was a skull. Skull and a hood. That's pretty awesome. On one side. The other side. Momura. What's better than a mummy? A mummy is awesome. You have a spellcasting mummy who then wields the ancient spirits of evil and then becomes a super jacked guy. Alright. So Skeletor, <laughs> I'm coming to get you, He-Man. And Momura, the ever-living. I did a horrible job, sorry. I haven't watched tape of these in a while, so this is basis memory from like 30 years ago. I do these differently. I have intelligence, fine ability, strength, speed, durability, invulnerability, and x-factor. I will be doing this fight twice. Once Mumra the ever-living, and then Mumra the all-powerful. So we'll get into this. This is Mumra the ever-living. Intelligence. I went back and forth this in a lot because they are both highly, highly skilled sorcerers. Magic users. Skeletor does have a pretty good depth when it comes to, as well as technology. That's kind of okay. So you have two guys who are great wizards, great spellcasters, with a pretty good knowledge of tech. And I was like, technically, Mumra's been around a lot longer. And he's actually using much more, uh, definitely more in the way of uh, divination. So I'm going to give him a slight edge. Again, this is one of those ones where you can, you can easily argue it and go, well, some people put Skeletor at a Doctor Doom level, which is just incredible. But I will say Mulbrand has a slight edge when it comes to when it comes to intelligence. Fighting ability. Again, based on how these two guys actually fought, you know, Skeletor actually did a lot more physical combat than we ever saw Mumra truly do. Strength. Ironically, with Mumra getting the ancient spirits of evil, he definitely is becoming stronger than, than Skeletor. I know people are going to say, but... Skeletor was able to defeat Superman. Yes, that was in the cartoon. That was in the comics of the cartoons. Speed. Skeletor actually is a little bit smaller than than Mumra, the Ever Living size, and he actually ran away a decent amount when it came to his, his combat with uh, with He-Man. He was definitely a little bit faster. Durability. This is going to be kind of an odd one. We give this one to Skeletor. Both functionally immortal. However. It was pretty easy to tax the, the tremendous amount of power that Mumra had and get him transformed back into the more decrepit form. Now I know in other later seasons that power became a lot, it took a lot more energy to actually to revert back to his normal thing, normal state. state. But you never had to worry about them to came to Skeletor. Skeletor is Skeletor. Mumra is both the decrepit mummy form as well as the, the, the ever-living. And vulnerability. You know, who have I seen take better attacks? I've seen Momra actually take much more impressive uh, 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 strikes and still stand. Now we're on to X Factor. This is actually going to Skeletor. And depending on the exact era in which this is going on, if you go with the, the first season, reflective surface, Momra goes from being the giant jacked guy again to being the, the decrepit form, which makes him very, very easy to defeat. He's also pretty easy to cut off his ancient spirits of evil. And the moment you cut him off from one of the four, he drastically loses his power. So a lot of it ends up being the fact that the majority of his power comes from an outside Loki, Locus, which Skeletor doesn't have to worry about that. So you can either go, you have the reflection to worry about, or the fact that he becomes too taxed, that's it. The moment he transforms back, Skeletor is going to own him. He's going to own him easily. 
and Momoro was going to make him like toilet paper roll at his at his at his, at his hideout. It's going to be really easy for him to do that. So now, <clears throat> and we set this whole fight again. Now we're going to go with Momoro on the all powerful. So now, so we're like God mode Momoro. So here we go. Intelligence stays the same. Fight ability stays the same. Strength still going to Momoro. Speed. This Momra now is ridiculously more powerful. It's a lot more speed to go with. Durability. He still has the potential that you can overtax him. It's a lot higher now. But functional immortal on one side, functional immortal on the other side, that actually can have his, have his abilities decreased. Invulnerability. Yeah, this version of Momra can take a lot, can take a lot of pretty heavy shots. The next factor. That goes to Mumra. This version of Mumra is virtually is virtually unstoppable. It's going to take a lot more than what Skeletor can commonly do to defuse and just be the god mode of, of Mumra. So if it's against the ever living, Skeletor takes him to the woodshed. Takes him to the woodshed and then takes him to the outhouse when he's done. If it's against the all powerful, this is this is like Mumra with an infinity gauntlet and a cosmic cube stuck in his chest. He is just the beasts of beasts. And he will entirely own Skeletor. And he will take that skull and he will occasionally use it to reenact scenes from Hamlet. 